What have we got on this one? Charcoal and soil samples. We have all the best bits, don't we? <laughs> Bone, species human, east ditch. Human adult femur shaft right. Bone, southwest corner barrow ditch. Bone, northeast corner barrow ditch. Some of this will be pig bones and piglet bones associated with the burial. And we've actually keeping some of this in silver foil in case we want to do any further C14 dating, so there's less risk of contamination. Back in March 2001, we had a, a call from a, an associate of the department saying that uh, they'd found a large grave in, in Yorkshire and uh, it looked like it had some interesting metal objects in it. The museum um, was really asked whether or, whether or not we could provide both the conservation expertise because we knew there was going to be metal in there and archaeological metals can be very difficult to lift and handle in the field. But also really to provide excavation support. Uh, so in mid-March 2001, I found myself heading for, for East Yorkshire um, and arrived on site to find uh, that it was rather cold and wet. <laughs> but that's the nature of British archaeology. <laughs> um, when the museum arrived, we were working in partnership with the Guildhouse Consultancy who had done the rescue excavations on the site in advance of the build. But because of the tree preservation order and the moving of the road, this was seen as a sort of emergency measures. So English Heritage very kindly came forward and sponsored the excavation, the actual cost of running the excavation, as it was seen as an unforeseen archaeological discovery and hog the builders who were the owners of the site and doing the development uh, before anything came out of the ground uh, agreed to donate everything to the museum. The site itself when we got there was really quite restricted. Uh, it was ended up being I suppose about 10 meters square but partly truncated by the road. The grave cut itself uh, well, it actually expands as you go down because there's been compression on the soil, but it, it ended up being about three and a half metres long by about two and a half metres wide at its widest point. Slightly sort of boat shaped, really, um, and respecting very much the size of the, uh, of the fixtures of the chariot that went in there. The original excavation team comprised of... Uh, supervisor and uh, director of Guildhouse Consultancy and one, one further excavator, uh, the museum was able to bring up two further excavators as well as myself and then we were supplemented with other personnel from the museum who had specialist skills so we were able to bring up two metals conservators to help lift the material when we got to that stage. Uh, we also had the use of a specialist illustrator for planning purposes. One of my colleagues, Tony Pasito, uh, was using ground uh, magnetometer, which looks for variation in the magnetic, uh, or the magnetic variation in the soil, which will allow even the slightest disturbance to show up. This is also very good, of course, because it's magnetic and looking for metal, uh, which has a very clear signal. Uh, once metal had been located, as it was in the case of this grave, we were then able to use a variety of metal detectors to ascertain exactly the scale of those pieces. But it's very useful to put as many techniques over the site before you start to excavate as you can. We didn't have the advantage that perhaps now one might use, for example, ground penetrating radar, which will give you instantly a three-dimensional idea of what's happening under the ground, but uh, that wasn't available way back then, six years ago. <laughs> And of course the other key member, although non-digging, was the overnight security. Because when you're working on a site like this, uh, word gets out very quickly, but you do need to have somebody there because uh, the evidence is all about absolute detail. From the excavation itself, uh, relating to the burial, we had the iron fittings of the chariot and also supplemented at the yoke end with the bronze turrets, the rain rings, which also had coral decoration on them. 
Uh, all traces of the timber had disappeared, but it had left in places some very interesting soil changes. Not just colour, we're used to seeing colour in archaeology, but in this case, because the grave was rather strangely filled with clay, uh, we actually had a few voids, which meant that we were able to take plaster casts of these voids, showing the shape of some of the pieces of, of, of timber. There it is, in all its glory. You can see, here's the limit, actually, of the original Iron Age piece of wood shown in the ground, coming along through here, on that side and back along this edge. And then, of course, there's the bone of the, the human skeleton. Mm -hmm.